My whole life changed unexpectedly one night when my wife and 12-year-old son came home from an evening out. My son looked happy like he had no idea anything was wrong, but his mother looked like she just bet her life savings on the horse that broke his leg right out of the gate. We'd been married 14 years at this point, so I knew my wife's expressions, even the ones she thought she could hide. This day started off normal, with us going to work and our son going to school. After school, she took him to baseball practice and any events afterward before returning home. Most of the time, I joined them at the baseball game after work, but this was the first time ever that I was asked to stay late. It didn't bother me too much, especially because it was a super rare occurrence, but when I saw how guilty my wife looked, I immediately wished I would have gone. After our son went upstairs, I asked her what was going on. She looked even more worried that I could tell something was wrong. She said nothing. Nothing was wrong, and everything was normal. I asked if he won the game, and she couldn't remember at first. I asked where they went afterwards, and she looked like she lied when she said the usual pizza shop. I was highly suspicious. I knew she did something she didn't want me to know. I went upstairs and spoke with our son for a while about his day in game, but he didn't show any signs of something bothering him. I asked what they did after the game, and he said he rode in his friend's van to their house, leaving mom at the field to pack up. Then she picked him up later. So they didn't go to the pizza shop at all, and my wife was alone for hours. I confronted my wife about her lies, and she said I was suspecting her of nothing and trying to unravel a mystery that didn't exist. She said she forgot to take some medicine that usually affects her memory, and it was that time of the month, so she didn't want me to pick a fight with her. I backed off because I learned a while ago to leave her alone at certain times, but I wasn't done investigating the inconsistencies. It wasn't until my son's next baseball game that I found out what really happened. I wasn't being an active sleuth, just a supportive father when I went to the food stand. The volunteer there, a woman about 30 years old, asked if I was married to that woman right over there. I said of course and asked why she wanted to know. She said she wasn't sure if she was overstepping bounds, but she saw her the week prior leave with another man. My jaw dropped. I double-checked she was actually talking about my wife. She said she knew it was her because I wasn't here last week and it was the only time she saw her without me or our son. I asked if she knew what AP looked like and she hesitated. She asked me to promise not to make a scene, so I did. She pointed out a tall, handsome fellow. He didn't have a wedding ring. It must have been some luck that right after I spotted him, I looked to my wife, who was looking at him, and then looked at me and tried to wave innocently. I walked back to her and played the role I was meant to play until we got home and were winding down to sleep. I knew I had to bring this up because I couldn't ignore it if my wife was cheating on me. I asked her for her phone first. The last time I did was so many years ago, I can't even remember why anymore. She was nervous, but handed it to me, plain dumb. The passcode was the same, and she didn't have any obvious conversations with another man, but I was mostly interested in her GPS history. She looked red, and like it was hard for her to breathe evenly. I asked why she was nervous, and that only made it worse. She snapped and said she wasn't, but she was gasping for air. She asked me if something was wrong, and I said yes. She looked like she was going to lose her mind. I found her trip history, and it showed her travels that week prior when she went with another man. I asked her why she went to his address, and she was stunned and speechless. There was no lie she could tell because I was going to look into it. She knew I could go knock on his door and find out that he's a single father who attends the same baseball games and knows my wife better than he should. After I stared at her for 45 seconds, waiting for a response, she broke. From scared stiff to full-on sobbing, her whole body was heaving while she said she knew she messed up. She said he just asked her out for coffee, but drove her to his house instead. His house was probably a 30-minute walk back to her car, which was parked at the baseball field. I asked her why she didn't walk away or run away or call me when she realized he wasn't taking her for coffee. She just shrugged and said she believed him when he said he had coffee in his house. They sat on his couch, and when he put his coffee down, arm around her and started kissing her neck, she didn't stop him. By looking at her, I could tell her world was ending, and she couldn't blame anyone but herself. She couldn't bring herself to lie about it, either. She felt so bad and guilty for going along with this guy's seduction, she couldn't face our new reality. 
I sat on the bed with her and cried too, but this wasn't a sign of weakness or potential forgiveness for her. I knew we were done, and I was crying because it was all gone so easily. I dreaded our child's new reality, but I didn't let myself think negatively for very long. My parents divorced when I was young, so I chalked it up to history repeating, and I knew I turned out okay. I looked into her eyes and told her to get out of my house. She continued wailing like I was hurting her deeply. I told her she had 30 minutes to pack before I called one of her relatives for help getting her out. Well, that time passed, and I think she knew that none of her relatives would come help her pack in the middle of the night. I called her father and told him what was going on. He asked me to forgive her just this once, but I said no. He said he'd be there in the morning to help her get out. So I locked myself in our son's room and slept on the floor. I was thankful she left us alone. The next morning, my son woke me up and said there was a commotion outside. I looked out and saw my FIL arguing with AP. My wife was bringing stuff out and putting it in AP's car. I went outside and watched my FIL punch AP. I couldn't believe my wife got AP involved. She expressed regret to me, but when I didn't forgive her, she went straight to him within a few hours. I wasn't very surprised FIL punched him. She was screaming, being dramatic and immature like she proved herself to be. Our son stood by my side, watching the drama unfold. When my wife saw her son, it looked like she died a little. She didn't want any of this to be happening, she was just trying to secure her future with the only option she had. It was no surprise that I won custody in the divorce, and our son didn't want to start visitation for a while. I let her come over a few times for dinner after all this blew over. It was awkward, but also kinda nice because my son liked us being together. AP kicked my wife out after five months anyway, so her father was called again to take her back under his roof for the first time in 15 years. It was a life outcome none of us should have had to face, but it became our reality because of my wife's selfish decision to go with another man. If anyone is reading this who's considering cheating on their spouse, don't do it. You'll have consequences, the truth always comes out, and when the worst thing that ever happened to you is no one's fault but your own, it will be a very hard thing to cope with. My ex routinely visits a behavioral and mental health clinic. OP, I am so sorry your wife randomly accepted the first form of temptation presented to her in a very long time. I wouldn't find it hard to believe if she was actually talking to AP for a while before this. He was a dad attending the same baseball games, so he would have made a likely secret AP. It's almost harder for me to believe that him asking her out for coffee was the first time they ever spoke. Regardless of that, I am proud of you. You handled this whole thing excellently. As soon as they came home and your wife looked upset, you waited for the time to ask her questions about it, and even asked your son some innocent questions too. You played the wise detective that refused to be made a fool. I'm relieved that the woman at the concession stand gave you that tip, and you kept your promise of not making a scene. Your wife deserved every bit of agony she experienced after willingly going behind your back to spend time with another man alone. She made a huge mistake to put herself in that situation. Thank you for sharing your story. Now let's get into our second story for today. My girlfriend was an emotional roller coaster. She was so spontaneous and crazy, looking back now, I know she didn't have any idea who she was or who she wanted to be. The thing that she was most fascinated by at the time was life after death and the power of love and attachment that we can barely understand. So when her brother unexpectedly died at this time in her life, she was grieving pretty hard and hoped she'd be able to contact him through a medium. We were dating for one and a half years at this point, so I was serious about her, but I wasn't sure what cue I needed to know it was time to propose. We were both 21 years old. We each had a place with our own roommates. I didn't know how to respond to her newfound hope, so I just supported her. We had a seance at her apartment with the male medium and one of her female roommates. I was kind of surprised the medium was a man, and it made me a little uncomfortable because he was like a handsome god that could communicate with spirits in another realm. I don't know how he pulled this off with so much masculinity. I was trying not to be impressed, but then I remembered he could just be a grown man playing dress up, and I felt a little better about myself. My girlfriend, though, was totally infatuated, 
She had a real belief in the possibility of communicating with her little brother, and she needed this man to connect her. She held his hand like it was life or death, and looked into his eyes like she wanted them to suck in her soul. My girlfriend's roommate, Lily, looked amused at my girlfriend's behavior, but not convinced by this guy. I appreciated her skepticism. During the seance, my girlfriend leaped up, still holding AP's hand, and said she hurt her little brother. She kept her eyes shut, per directions, while she yelled out to him. Lily and I were silent. AP played along with my girlfriend, calling out to her brother by name and making her cry. I was rolling my eyes. He noticed my skepticism and called me out, telling me to keep my eyes shut to keep the realm portal open. I said I'd like to watch, and my girlfriend freaked out. She said I was keeping her from talking to her brother, and if I wasn't going to respect her wishes, I should leave. Well, I had enough. I didn't like this guy, but I didn't want to bum her out about her brother. I went home for about an hour, but then Lily texted me. She said normally she didn't want to get into other people's business, but she still had my number as an emergency contact for my girlfriend, and she wanted to tell me that the medium was still at their place, but they moved the seance into my girlfriend's bedroom. My girlfriend and I didn't get to have sex very much, partially to avoid unwanted pregnancy and partially because our roommates were very nosy. So it made me really upset that she actually let this guy in her room when I hardly even got in there. I rushed back over, but by the time I got there, Lily had left. My girlfriend's door was locked, and the room was quiet. I knocked, and my girlfriend said, Yes, we're getting dressed, Lily, and that's when she opened the door and saw it was me. AP was standing behind my girlfriend, pleased that I didn't return until after he got some action. I immediately asked why they were getting dressed. My girlfriend was speechless. She looked scared and swallowed hard. She tried to think of what to say. AP thanked her for a great time and left, avoiding my gaze. She was smiling so hard at him, and she looked at me defiantly, like she wondered if she could get away with this. I told her she was stupid for sleeping with AP and believing in this speaking with the dead crap. I told her I was sorry for her loss, but it was extremely unlikely she was going to contact her little brother by taking AP's service package. Her mouth dropped and said she didn't mean to upset me, she just wanted to contact her brother one more time. I told her I knew what she was doing and it wasn't going to work on me. I broke up with her. She looked extremely upset, but like she was covering it with a mask. She kicked me out, and I didn't hear from her for six hours. Then she called me to grieve over her loss and the situation I put her in. She said her roommate hated her now, and she didn't do anything wrong. So now, she was trying to say she didn't sleep with him. I thought of Laylee and hung up on my ex to call her. She answered it quietly, and I asked her why she wasn't there when I got there. She said they were having sex so loudly it pissed her off. She tried to knock and yell through the door that she shouldn't be doing this to me, but my girlfriend only told her to mind her own business. I thanked her for trying to intervene and for telling me the truth because now I knew she wasn't planning on being honest. Just then, I heard my ex in the background accusing Lily of backstabbing her, and they got into a huge fight. After they got into a fight, I ended up allowing Lily to stay at my place. Four weeks later, my ex had been calling both of us constantly and showed up at the apartment four times, but we never answered her. Then she left a voicemail on my phone telling me she was pregnant. It was the finest karma I ever heard. I knew it wasn't my child because we didn't do anything for weeks before she cheated. I texted her to wish her luck but said I would not be involved with her or the affair child ever again. Lily took this time to tell her she was no longer her roommate either. Without Lily paying her portion of the rent, my ex lost her place to live and the people in her life. She was left pregnant and alone at the age of 21. It was hard for her to find a job and daycare after she had the baby, but I only know this because of her Facebook status. I feel so relieved that she did this before I proposed. OP, you really did luck out. She proved she was immature and didn't know how to commit to someone. You were so smart to wait to propose. You were waiting until you knew for sure it was the right thing to do, and before you knew it, she cheated on you. I'm glad Lily called you to tell you what was going on. Your ex did not deserve a second chance. She showed you she was not the one you were meant to spend your life with. Her attempt to speak with her brother beyond the grave only led to her cheating on you. She has a rough life ahead of her, 
and I hope she learns the lessons she needs to in order to live a meaningful life. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.